Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the session today. And uh, the session uh, will be taken by uh, integration team, uh, myself, Dr. Shabnam, working uh, as a team member in integration, private integration, and uh, Mr. Sachin Yadav with me will be, the, will be taking the session. So uh, this session is specifically uh, will go through the functionalities specifically for M1, M2, M3, uh, like mainly the steps which you need to follow uh, right from uh, you apply uh, in the sandbox and the, how the process will go on, where, what you need to do, at what point you, you, need, you need to go for FT and VASA, how and how you need to do the exit from the sandbox. Uh, we'll not go through the technical part in this call, like the API thing. We'll, we'll, we, can all, we can only uh, you know, uh, run through some of the aspects of the functionalities of M1, M2, M3. Uh, depends upon how much time uh, we can uh, we can we we have to uh, for the, to cater this session today. So uh, uh, quickly, I'm uh, uh, giving the call over uh, to Mr. Sachin to start uh, with the session. Hello, thank you, Sunil. Am I audible? All right. So. Uh... I think uh, you all have registered on the sandbox and uh, got your client ID and secret. Now uh, you are doing your integration. You have started with your integration. So uh, let me demonstrate you. Let me go go through the sandbox.abdm.gov.in website. This website uh, is very helpful for the integration. Here uh, we have all the information uh, which you will need in the integration process. So um, first you can go to the sandbox.abdm.gov.in. Then let me show you first uh, where you can find the webinars. So here in the resources, we have this webinar section. So uh, uh, maybe this recording also uh, we will upload here. So uh, you can go through to our old webinars. Um, suppose that uh, if you are interested in M1 and M2, you can go to webinar 8 or for M1, you can go to webinar seven, etc. So in future also, we will be conducting the webinars and the recording will be available here. Also here, uh, we have dev form. Uh, you can uh, write your queries on dev form. Uh, we have an integrators community here. Uh, people are helping um, one another and our integration team is also uh, will be replying here. Other than this dev form, you can go to FAQs or you can write us on integration.gov.in integration if you face any issues during your integration journey. So for documentation, uh, we have old documentation and new documentation. Uh, I will show you the new documentation. We have made some improvements uh, after getting the feedbacks from the community. So if you click on the new documentation, let me first show you. We have these uh, in the left-hand side. Uh, these are the main building blocks of the ABDM. That is milestone one, milestone two, PHR, HFR, HPR, UHI, HCX, etc. Now, after uh, getting your keys, you will be uh, making your product. And uh, after making your product, first thing will be the functional testing. So you have to uh, do your functional testing and the security testing, that is VASA. So let me go through the uh, phases one by one. And along the way, I will explain you what it is. In About Sandbox, here is the sandbox integration process journey. And you have already uh, requested the sandbox credentials and you have uh, got the credentials as well. Now you, you are at the step number three. Here you will integrate with EBDM APIs. And after integration, you will be doing the functional testing and VASA. So uh, make sure uh, the functional testing date and the VASA date is like uh, uh, close. You cannot do that. You have uh, completed your VASA on 
one month and after three months you are doing the functional testing okay we will not accept that you these uh, two dates have to be like uh, in the same time of the same time period also uh, you have to make sure for which application version uh, you are doing this functional testing and wasa testing so the application version should be there on the functional testing and wasa testing and we will be approving that particular application version too after functional testing and wasa uh, you will show the video demonstration of uh, your product to our uh, integration team we will check it after checking we will uh, if it everything is there we will mm, pass this request to the stc committee and then you have to give a short demo to stc uh, members and after that you can go to live here are the milestone for abdm integration milestone one is about our creation our capture verification of our address during the patient registration so here we have embedded some links you will find the apis the documentation all of them in m2 uh, the main thing is to uh, record uh, linking and the data transfer and in m3 you will be requesting the data and uh, with the patient's consent and showing the data in thr uh, there will be the user uh, registration user verification and the consent management part and the full record functionality will be there so i think uh, you have already this upon uh, sandbox so you can ignore this step after uh, you can verify your application status here i think this is now you have already completed this so here uh, we have uh, some guidelines how you can start with the how 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 the first what will be the first thing you do so you will install uh, check all the apis you can use postman to test the apis so here we have demonstrated uh, some of the how you can use postman and uh, how you will use the uh, session api to get the token and how you will use the apis so as you can see in the sessions api you will passing your uh, client id and you will give you will uh, receive one access token and this access token you will use in the rest of the apis so uh, the integrators who will do uh, m2 m3 and phr uh, they will also uh, they will also use this uh, sandbox ava app so here you will find the ava apps apk you can download this and install this using this app uh, you can approve the consent and check the profile details of the patient and test the uh, m2 flow uh, by full record functionality if you have if you are doing m2 then you can test the full record functionality uh, in a few of the apis uh, you have to give the encryption in like uh, the mobile number or ava number otp etc so you will uh, encrypt the otps in rsa in, uh, using rsa encryption so here are the steps for that you will generate the public key then using any rsa tool uh, you can encrypt the data and use in the apis so after uh, integration let me show you the exit process i have already demonstrated this flow now here are the uh, some of the ft agencies uh, functional testing agencies you can contact and uh, uh, to get all the details you will find the link here to get the contact details of all the certified agencies and for wasa uh, you have to uh, go to this link let me open this in the new tab so here uh, we have some certain uh, verified agencies for wasa testing in this uh, website you can go to security assurance and here you can check the unpaneled by certain agencies here you will find the 
document the list of employment agencies so you can contact the agencies for VASA. Uh, you will be you will find the test cases and the postman collection and the swagger documentation here for documentation i would recommend uh, recommend you to go through uh, one by one like for example for aba creation you can go through the documentation and for the particular step you will find the swagger documentation below this page like for aba creation we have this swagger documentation embedded in the documentation itself. So API input, output, everything you can test it. I think that's all from my side. Uh, if you have any other queries, uh, we will take it later. Now uh, I will uh, hand over to Shabnam and she will demonstrate to you uh, what you have to implement in M1 M2 and what are the things you have to keep in mind? Uh, thank you so much, Sachin, uh, for the first part that you have covered. Uh, I'll be quickly uh, moving you ahead with the functionality. Uh, the specifically, I will uh, move you move uh, into the specific functionality, the mandate functionality, because mo most of the integrators we get DMs and you know messages and calls of of lot of confusion that is going around because the the documentation is really huge, which we also understand. And, uh, you know, for the new integrator, it's really difficult to understand that which all, you know, you need to implement. Like we have, you know, hundreds of APIs, but you everything is not mandate. So I'll uh, specifically, you know, um, point on all the mandate functionalities which you need to implement for M1, M2, M3. One second more important thing is, while uh, you know uh, for sandbox exit only m1 is not sufficient we want you also to raise awareness amongst other integrators friends which you might be having in the community to you know uh, spread this thing that only m1, m1 is not sufficient for sandbox exit m1 and m2 you have to come with at least m1 and m2 minimum of, of two milestone either m1 or m2 or as per your business requirement you can also implement m1 and m3 m1 is mended because a few of the insurance firms, they do not do M2 because, you know, uh, HIP initiated, you know, thing is uh, not mandatory them for them because they are providers. So they have to directly share the records. So they do not do M2. So however, for insurance companies, we also entertain with M1 only because they can also go live with M1. But other than insurance companies and banking, uh, you have to come up. Uh, at least with two uh, two uh, developments from uh, either M1, M2 or M1, M3 to go live. So I'll quickly share my screen uh, for the functionality which we'll go through today. Sachin, can you just stop uh, sharing your screen? Oh, can't hear you. Um, are you speaking? Okay, am I audible now? Uh, yeah, it's, you're yeah. audible now. Thanks. So, uh, basically, we have three milestones in M1, M2, M3. And uh, quickly, I'll go through uh, three of them uh, since I think we have time for this. Yeah. So, uh, uh, in the website, in the documentation section, as Sachin has taken, like uh, you can see many of the steps, like you know, in M1 also through uh, uh, Aadhaar Biometrics, through DL Pan. So we have different modes of creation of Abha. So the mended one, which now we are, you know, doing it, that is by by Aadhaar card. So we are following Aadhaar card. Some also do by you know uh, Aadhaar Bio. Aadhaar Bio is specifically for someone who really want to do. Uh, there's a specific team for uh, for this. If you have any query, you can write it on. We can move uh, your query to the team because it is regarding, you know, we have some device and on RD device through which you can, you know, do the registration of ABHA. Anyways, I'll take go through with the, the mandate one that is by uh, the ADHA. So ABHA creation by using ADHA number. So uh, 
after once we enter the aadhar number so aadhar consent is mandatory because aadhar number is a very specific and uh, sensitive uh, information that you are taking from the patient so after you enter the aadhar number followed by the consent so we have a consent uh, part over here so you have to implement this thing so once we will be uh, sharing uh, this uh, document this uh, this uh, video you can uh, you can take this part and implement for m1 so this is the consent language now the consent language is changed which is already there in the website we 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 request everyone to change uh, we will be changing there also but this one which you need to implement so once this consent you will take from the patient uh, you the patient will receive the otp in the aadhar link mobile number and the otp should you should have the timer on the system of 60 seconds for the otp functionality and also recent uh, otp functionality should also be implemented in the system once you enter the otp the system the system will have your system should have another functionality which will show of you know providing a communication number the communication number means like your aadhar might be linked with another number for example you are going to the hospital and you want to register your own aadhar and at at the at that time uh, when you uh, you are giving the aadhar number your, your aadhar number is linked to your father's mobile number and your father is not around he might be somewhere traveling abroad so you cannot connect with him at that point of time you can give another communication mobile number right you it can be yours or it can can be of somebody's or somebody of your friend who is in the communicable mode to you so at that time you will receive otp in that mobile number that is the step known as communication mobile number so there otp will come to the uh, the given number which you you want to share so if the otp if the if the mobile number which you are sharing is same as the number which is linked to the aadhar number then the otp should not is not required to you know to be sent again this is this is how the functionality works and if the mobile number is different the otp will come to the different mobile number and then again you know the 60 seconds timer and recent functionality should be there and then automatically uh, the, the another page will land where you have to do, give a customized you have to create a customized aadhar number why because the aadhar number aadhar address which is created by automatically by the system is quite a big what how it is because the number which you provide it will the system will automatically you know give something like 9800189 digit number along with you know something xyz like that so that is difficult for a patient for a layman to you know memorize it in the brain so that's why we have given a functionality api functionality that is phr suggestion api where you can suggest your own aadhar address just like the email address we have the gmail address we have that is that becomes easier for us to you know uh, memorize in the brain so specifically there are few of the you know uh, validation points which you need to you know understand and implement like you know minimum length should be eight characters maximum 18 characters the dots and underscore and the beginning and the end should not uh, have a special character likewise so once you provide uh, the you know customized aadha address the system will automatically give you you, you are this aadha card which you can see in the you know right side of my, of the page and uh, with the patient name the aadha uh, uh, the aadha number which will be automatically created by the system and of course aadha address which you have customized it the date of birth of the patient the gender and the Uh, mobile number the mobile number here will reflect the same number which you will give at the time of registration which might not be same as the aadhar link mobile number if you are if, if the number is same as the aadhar link mobile number then that number will be reflected in the card so uh, this will complete the you know aadhar number the capture the creation of aadhar number and the address so then comes the aadhar verification the number and the address which was created in the system now that need to be verified so this is this a uh, uh, step is specifically for those patient who are with the returning users like i have already my you know abha uh, address and abha number created and i am going to the hospital for a consultation so how it, it will be verified how the you know people of the hospital will verify that i know i have the abha number or abha number by number abha number and the address is authenticated how they will authenticate so this is done by two methods that is verification by mobile otp and verification by aadhar otp you have to implement both of them but you can use any of them you know while you are live in the production so uh, by uh, so first we will do verification one by one firstly we can do verification uh, of the abha address which you have created and the abha number the ways are same so for abha number verification of mobile otp so otp will be shoot will be fired to the communication number of the patient which patient has given during the registration right 
again the otp timer should be set to 60 seconds and the reset otp functionality will be also there and once successfully verified the system what it will do it will fetch the demographic information of the patient means who the patient is the all the demographics will include a name gender mobile number date of birth state district address pin code our number and the address so you can keep all the demographic information or uh, information of the patient as non editable format or editable format editable format you should not we we do not recommend because these are very sensitive information which will come to the aadhar card right you can you know keep the non editable format as like mobile number the state district pin code because this can be changed at any part of the time you know patient if migrate from one city to another city so it can be changed likewise the mobile uh, the uh, uh, address which you created can be also verified Uh, by the same way by mobile otp here in the mobile otp the you know num uh, the otp will find the mobile number in aadhar otp the otp will be the otp will be sent uh, uh, by the uidi to the mobile number only aadhar link mobile number that's the only difference rest all the demographics remain which will fetch will remain same that they will not edible format will remain same as mentioned in this slide so this completes the abha number creation and the verification right so in m1 only there is a continuation something like you have heard about scan and share because it's scan and share uh, it depends that you want to implement or not but if your hospital if your big sort of a hospital where there is lot of you know uh, patients coming and there is a long line of for opd then you can implement all the government setups like aims and mamsi they have implemented scan and share because of to reduce the tax so here what happens the patient already having a phr app like our abha phr app or a coin app or any app which is certified by abdm right the patient will open the scanner of the phr app and patient will scan the qr code which is already there in the in the hospital right once patient will scan the qr code what will happen all the information the demographic information of the patient will fetch to the hmi system of the hospital here the patient like no otp and all these things nothing is required in one second all the information of the patient will uh, you know fetch in the you know page, uh, the hospital hmi system and the registration will be finished at that point and patient will get a token a token will be generated from the system right and uh, the the uh, registration counter people will get the token number that you know you can now go and uh, go for the consultation uh, area so this what happens uh, people you know might be pregnant ladies or old people who they do not need to stand in the long queue you know for registration process and then waiting for r and r so this is a very you know fast track kind of registration process which has been implemented by many 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 uh, you know government hospitals now over delhi and other states also even private setup is doing also and uh, this is not mandatory but it is a great uh, initiative to implement this part also so this is a uh, just a rep uh, demographic representation of m1 so this completes uh, the m1 part so i want to know if anybody have any questions regarding m1 so so that we can move ahead to m2 also not from me thank you yeah okay so uh, moving ahead uh, to m2 so what is m2 so if if like in m1 what we have done we have created the abha number we have uh, created the abha address i know verification is capture is done verification is done and there are two modes which i have already mentioned uh, my mobile otp aadhar otp verification and creation of uh, uh, abha is done by only aadhar to be very crisp you have to follow only this method only this steps for m1 completion that all no other things is required next is m2 m2 that is linking of health records right so if your application is enabled with m2 functionalities then it, it implies that your application has the ability to link the generated health record with the abha address and display the same on the phr app so it is in if you see the documentation there is a lot of things in m2 to be very precise again m2 you have to you have to only follow two parts in m2 that is hrp initiated linking and user initiated linking hrp initiated linking means hospital will initiate your linking hospital will create records in the system initiate your linking and all the records you will find in the phr app user initiated linking means you have already visited the hospital back in 2 3 4 days of uh, one week now you want to link the records by yourself sitting at your home opening your phr app logging in and you will find the hospital you will fetch the records and you will see the records 
you don't need to go into the hospital and collect the records. That is user initiated discovery and linking. So in HIP initiated linking, there are three of the prerequisites you, which you need to follow before you start the linking. For example, these are the these are the API part which I will not move ahead inside deep. I'll just tell you that before you need before what you need to do for health record linking, you have to onboard your facilities, of course, your facility, you know, up in the health facility register portal. You have to, you know, add updated services, your services like your HIU HIU services, you know, by B1 bridges, add updated services. So and and you can also see the list of registered HIPs in your client ID, you know, by using these APIs. So this whole thing you will find in the HFR portal. In where in even in M two documentation in the old you can you can go through old documentation also new documentation also because over both are equally uh, great but it depends upon you which one you find it more easier to understand. Okay, next which I uh, have already mentioned that we have two parts so I'll quickly move ahead with HIP initiated linking. HIP means the hospital will do the initiation and linking of care context and linking of the health uh, creation of care context and linking of the health records. So here. Uh, the patient will come to the hospital, care context will be generated, right? So, uh, the health record of the, the patient has taken the consultation, health record is maybe the, you know, the diagnostic report, the discharge summary, the consultation, prescription, immunization, these are all the HI types, right? And this will be generated in the system and this will be pushed from the system. Once it is pushed from the care context, linking is done. So, linking is done. Linking will be done by specifically four methods. The first one is demographic auth authentication and linking. Second is mobile OTP linking. Third is Aadhaar OTP and the fourth is uh, demo, uh, direct auth. The fourth direct auth is uh, not for private entities. It is only for government entities. There are three of them you can do. However, the most mandatory for uh, you know any of the private ent entity to uh, get the you know production keys to move uh, to get the functional testing done and to pass the HTC from HT uh, from NHA is the demo auth. If you do come doing demo auth, then also we will uh, you know we are okay because demo is mandated in the uh, functional testing uh, test cases. Rest you can also uh, imply any of the math methods like Aadhaar, OTP, and uh, mobile OTP. So uh, in in demo auth. Yeah, these are the methods. So, if the patient preferred demo auth mode, so then the patient will have to share the name, date of birth, or gender. System should have the provision to validate the user and create a new access token just to for the purpose of linking by a specific API set. So, while validation, the ABHA number and the ABHA address should be reflected against the patient name, date of birth, gender. Right, the validation. How it will if the patient will give the you know ABA address or the the even the ABA number, it will automatically you know reflect in the system. The patient is already having the you know the ABA already generated in the system, and you know already the patient has generated uh, the care context. Already uh, prescription is generated in the system. It will then the it will fetch the demographic details of the patient in the system. You can show any demographic detail like you know if the ABA address of the number and the name or gender, any four of the details you need to show, no need to show the address, PIN code and all these things which uh, you need to fetch in the M1 part. Because the patient is already validated, he already have you know ABA now. Now the you know it is just for authentication for linking purpose that you are doing. Right. So uh, once this is done and once the data is pushed from you know the HMI system, you the patient will automatically get a notification in the PHR app that you know new care context is generated and new data is available. When the patient will click over there, there you the, the patient will automatically uh, land to the uh, full record section in the PHR app where the patient will pull the record. For example, as for Manipal Hospital, it, it will automatically show in the PHR app and you have to pull the record and the record will get synced and the uh, it will fetch in the PHR app as against the same date. So this is this uh, this process is uh, on real time basis. This process is on real time basis. This is HIP linking. Patient is in the hospital, and hospital people is going to care create the care context and the link and link the records. And the patient will get the notification, and patient can pull the record in the page. So this will happen in the real time basis. Where comes the HI uh, U? That is user initiated linking and discovery. So here, as I have said, that there are four methods: demo, demo auth, mobile OTP, other OTP, direct auth. Direct auth is not mandatory. Demo auth is mandatory, and 
from mobile OTP and other OTP, you can opt for anyone. There is no restriction for that. In mobile OTP, also same process is there. Here, you know, uh, the patient will get the OTP in his or her mobile number. Once the patient will, uh, patient will provide the, the OTP, then, uh, you know, the linking process again gets started. And again, the, the notification will come to the PHR app. The same process will uh, go ahead. Okay, so this completes the uh, HIP initiated linking where I have already mentioned and I'm mentioning it again. You can opt for any two pros part, demo or this many three, mobile OTP, other OTP, anyone you can you can implement. No hard and fast rule for that. HIU initiated is user initiated means user, the patient. I'm the user. So here, that is user initiated discovery link. I'm the user. I have already visited the hospital. I want myself, I log into my PHR app. I will find my hospital inside the uh, app and then I will pull records. The record will automatically come to my system. One more very important thing which I want to share, I don't know, I, I should share or not, maybe it will be more for you guys since you are new or I don't know, you might be implementing uh, since months. But when the record is pulled, because you know, all this records and thing, because you have to follow the FHR bundle, we have to implement proper FHR bundle things and when you will pull the record, the you should always implement in such a way that, you know, the record should be seen, the structured data should be seen in the PHR app. Structured data is mandatory to be seen in the PHR app. Many of the integrators, they will implement everything will come to us while we do the demo. We see that you are implemented on, you have implemented only the unstructured data, that is the PDF of the consultation paper or the prescription which you have. So it is mandatory to, you know, show, you know, when you are making the bundles and if you have done a lot of things in the backend, so that is required to be shown in the PHR app, that is structured data. So it is better to show both structured and unstructured, but structured data is more important to be seen in the PHR app. So that's completed the HIP and HIU, uh, that is user initiated in your discovery and linking and soft, uh, HIP initiated linking. And last part is the, uh, you know, M3 part that is means after linking, what you will do? Sharing of record. record. So what is the sharing of record means you need? For, when you share means here in M3, it's all about consent management. Means the record is already generated. Now if the doctor wants, now I'm the doctor, I want to see your record. Now there should be some consent thing between us that, you know, you are sharing me the record. So, you know, uh, for, for example, I'm the doctor and I'm, I'm asking you the record of the last six months. So when I'll ask you the record of last six months, you will get notification. You can also deny, you can, uh, of sharing the record, you can approve. There is like four status, approve, uh, approve uh, uh, consent, deny consent, there is expired consent and there is revoke consent. Revoke consent means once you have already approved, uh, you know, um, the consent of sharing the records. But however, after 10 minutes, I, I believe, you know, I, I felt that no, I should not share all of my records. So I will, I'll pull back my record. I'll revoke my record. I'll revoke my consent. So that is the revoke consent part. And then expired consent is when, you know, a a, a doctor has requested for a consent, uh, requested for a specific, uh, you know, a health record to a patient and the patient has not logged into the, you know, not seen only. And uh, it was the time because there's specific time uh, of, uh, of the record to get expired. So the valid time when it gets uh, ended, then it, uh, it, will, it will get expired. So, you know, there is a time frame where the patient will also need to approve or deny the request or revoke the request. So this ends the M3 part over here. Uh, and um, I have, I know that I have quickly moved ahead, you know, um, just brushing off into the path. So I just want to know that if you have any questions regarding the same and uh, we can ask and we can uh, discuss now. And if not, then you can also write us over integration.support at the rate nha.gov.in. Hello, ma'am. Yeah. Am I audible? Yeah, yes, sure. ma'am. I have uh, registered as an HRB and I have got the uh, secret key also. Uh, and uh, now I am able to create the access token. So, the, for the next step, uh, I have to uh, do this. Uh, ABA creation is mandatory? Yes. 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 Uh, see, ABA uh, creation is mandatory. Either you are offline doing consultation online, what whatever your a, a business into that does not matter. Abha creation is mended. What is Abha? Abha is created like we have Aadhaar, like we have pan related to the financial things. We have 
आधार रिलेटेड टू यू नो इट्स यूनिक आई डी सो आभा इज अक आई डी रिलेटेड टू ऑल दिल्थ रिकॉर्ड यू नो इट इज रिलेटेड टू दिल्थ डेटा लाइक द आधार कार्ड और हमारे दिल्थ रिकॉर्ड विच वी हैव यू नो आभा I have one question. Uh, I have one question. Uh, if we have already completed penetration testing for our application, uh, and we have the uh, report available, we'll still need to uh, uh, do the functional testing and the VASA testing from the empaneled agencies. Yes. 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 Okay. penetration testing is for the application that you have you know uh, you know yeah. uh, develop like you know the m1 m2 m3 like the abm application chip for that mm-hmm. matter but ft okay. is for the it's the functionality the functionality which i have discussed now like you know you should have this and done, it's yeah. it's mandatory to get it done from the uh, embedded agencies okay yes. okay so those and, are different embedded agencies and they have cleared the exams with us and that's why they are embedded okay. Got it. And uh, in case is there uh, issues with the integration that we are facing, or uh, where do we contact? Or uh, which yeah. email any address? Any kind of or... any kind of issues? Yeah, yeah. Over there, Sachin. Yeah, uh, ma'am. First, uh, you can write us on the uh, dev form that I have showed you, and I I am sharing my email ID and our uh, team's email ID here. You can write us on integration dot support at the rate and say dot juvi dot in. Okay. and again uh, from the question that uh, avenger soft uh, for the test cases uh, you can write us i have shared the email id you will write me uh, asking the test cases which are the mandatory and what will be the next step and uh, we will help you and if you require any apis or postman collections you can write me personally we will give you the uh, details and here uh, we have said the integration dot support uh, if you have some uh, queries you can ask here also and for uh, cs uh, c center uh, sir uh, if you uh, aapko uh, like kuch bhi query hai ya fir kuch bhi hai to aap mere ko likh dijiye uh, abdm.pc20 pe hum aapke sath ek call set up karke aapki queries uh, le lenge sir there is no issue aapko koi bhi questions hai ya koi bhi queries aapko koi bhi support sahi आप ईमेल पे लिखिए आप और हम आपसे कनेक्ट करेंगे या आल्सो आई जस्ट वांट टू पिक आउट वन मोर पॉइंट सो वी वी आर वी आर आल्सो लाइव विद बी थ्री एपीआई सो आई रिकमेंड दैट फॉर बी थ्री एपीआई यू कैन स्टार्ट फॉर एम वन ओनली सिंस बी थ्री इज नॉट डेट स्टेबल फॉर एम टू एंड एम थ्री आई गोट मेनी डी एम रिगार्डिंग डेट सो आई प्रिपेयर टू टू डू एम टू एम थ्री इंटीग्रेशन विद बी टू एंड बी वन एपीआई ऑन जब तक आप एम वन कम्प्लीट करेंगे बी थ्री भी स्टेबल हो जाएंगे मोस्ट प्रोबली सो यू डोंट हैव टू वरी इफ यू हैवेंट स्टार्टेड सो यू जस्ट यूज बी थ्री एपीआई एंड वेन यू रीच टू एम टू एंड एम थ्री पार्ट यू कैन अगेन कंसल्ट विद एनीथिंग एल्स एनी क्वेश्चन So yeah, I have one question. Okay, uh, while creation of uh, ABA, okay, we said that like uh, Aadhaar is mandatory. Okay, for creation of ABA. So what in case the user doesn't have ABA, uh, Aadhaar? User does not have Aadhaar. So yeah, it's an exceptional case, right? Uh, yes, yes, sir. Uh, for for the users, uh, they if they don't have Aadhaar. they can use the uh, driving license method or the pen method we support dl and pen also okay okay and apart from these two method does there is another uh, separate method like no for... no okay. no okay okay and is there any age limit for aba no sir okay 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 also uh, uh, about the api version okay yes you just spoke uh, we, there is no age limit but uh, if you are uh, like for suppose that if you are creating 
with for m2 phase okay should we go with the v3 or should we as mam said right or you go with the uh, older version if is uh, sir if you have uh, completed uh, m1 and you are already uh, working with v v2 apis or v1 apis i would recommend uh, go with uh, v1 or sorry v1 or v2 and uh, but uh, i think in uh, this month and uh, december Uh, you, you can start with v3 apis also because uh, v3 uh, apis are somewhat stable and this backward completely so uh, we will be able to fix in few month a few days so uh, if you are like uh, very native states then uh, it's your call sir if uh, okay. you can wait for uh, some time actually record linking is working fine with v3 but just data transfer part uh, so if, uh, for now you can do the record linking using v3 and again uh, ask us ki data transfer part you, sh- you should do or not okay okay got uh, it the hip initiated linking and the user initiated linking you can do using v3 data transfer uh, you can connect like after maybe you have completed the linking part then you can connect with us again okay uh, uh, again one more question for in the sandbox state okay uh, if for m2 okay we have to register the facility right so uh, does it comes so uh, through the existing sandbox uh, website okay there is option to register the uh, this help facility hmm yes we have we have different portals for uh, hfr and hpr uh, you can directly log in to that uh, these portals and create your facility id or okay so uh, uh, for the so product for production and for the staging for the development set both the both will have the same uh, health facility id or will it different no both will have different uh, in a staging you don't have to uh, like register uh, on the production because uh, you will be testing only so you can uh, create a dummy uh, facility using apis and uh, test your apis okay okay, okay mm. thank you Yeah, yes, in sir, one more question. question. You have to use your live production. You know, if you're a hospital, then you have to use your hospital as a uh, HIP over production. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, Arjunji, Arjunji, uh, can you share me your client ID and entity name? Yeah, sure. Let me hold on. Like, uh, just uh, tell me your entity yeah. name from which company? Arm Health. Oh, yeah. All right, all right. So, ah, uh, I this is my email ID. Ah, uh, you can write me, sir. Ah, uh, uh, we we can separately discuss or the sure, V two or ah V three version of the APIs. Oh, yeah, I will do that. I will do that. Ah, huh. all right. Ah, uh, ma'am, one more question. Yes, Hello? ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. uh sir what about that dummy details how can we create it ma'am there is one api and uh, add update services uh, if i think you are in m1 so m1 yes. we don't have you don't have to create uh, the facilities for m2 okay. you have to register them so you will find one add update services facility here you can register your hip hiu or phr anything okay uh like the dummy data so we can create it ha huh. you will you can create a mock hip and test your apis okay can you share the link for that mock hip and uh, you can ma'am write us on the mail actually uh, we will we will be providing you the postman collection and in postman collection uh, uh, every like each api will be there okay the particular hip if you want i can uh, tell you the end point if you have the collection that is uh, and uh, add update services slash add update services okay the end point this is the end point okay anyone else 
okay uh, uh, sachin thank you so much uh, we can uh, i think we can close the session uh, for the day uh, requesting everyone for upcoming sessions you can always go to our resource section and then uh, check for the upcoming sessions and uh, join the meeting and you can also inform uh, the awareness between uh, the other new integrators who are who might be struggling you know uh, integrating since months and they can also you know attend our sessions and as the session is recorded we'll be updating soon the session in the webinar section uh, thank you so much uh, for attending the session and uh, we'll meet up again thank you bye bye